everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Dubious Knowledge. I am Jason. I am not GMing tonight. I have the pleasure and privilege of being a host tonight along with my co-host, my the lovely Corey. Corey, how are you? I'm doing well tonight, Jason. Glad to be back on. Uh, sad that I missed a month, but uh, very excited for tonight's episode. Yeah, it was a it was a great episode. Of course, I'm going to say that because I, I I am the dwarf daddy, so of course <laughs> I'm going to say that. But um, yeah, it's it's a fantastic episode and um, fortuitous that we're bringing up last month's episode because the player's guide for Sky King's Tomb just released today and. I was giddy about it, so um, <laughs> thank you for sharing that with me, Corey. <laughs> but 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 let's uh, let's not belabor the point tonight. We are talking about Kate and Kalian, and we have a new special guest for you all. And I have the honor, pleasure, and privilege to introduce to everybody Alex Giordano. Alex, how are you? Hi, my name is Alex. I'm the Giordano that he spoke of. <laughs> did, did I actually um, get your You're last name correct? Yeah, pretty close. You're supposed to roll the R, so it's supposed to be Giordano. But, um, but <laughs> you know, most people don't because they're not Very super Italian. Italian. Um, yeah. You're also supposed to go, Mamma mia, Gabagool, you gotta get a Giordano. Go to the market, uh, mozzarella, and stuff like that. But, alas... <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey! At least I can, at least I can say I did better than our our friends no, over at, at STF. A lot. Oh, it gets butchered all the time. Uh, I I hear Gorgano, uh, Giorgiano, Gorgangi. Uh, I when I was younger, I used to um, I used to teach children, and they used to just call me Mister G because they couldn't pronounce it. So just Mister G. Uh, there you go. Because you could, it's Mister Gorgangiano. So, so, sorry, uh, oh, no, Erobs. I think I like Erobs it. is the only one from STF that listens to this. Sorry, Erobs. So, <laughs> Erobs, get uh, everyone else to listen. Jeez. So, um, yeah, we're we're talking about we're ca- talking about Caden Kalian tonight. So, this this is going to be a fun one. Um, this is probably going to be a little bit shorter one than some of our previous ones. Just because there's not a whole lot to Caden. He is one of the more recent gods. He hasn't been ne- along, around nearly as long as Torag or Phrasma or any of the, the really long-lived gods. So the lore there is fairly small. Newish. Yeah, fairly um, newish. I would like to open tonight's episode with a toast. A in toast. In honor of the drunken god. Don't let rules get in the way of enjoying what is really good in life. I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a slurp just for you, Steve. Oh, uh, Steve! Oh, sweet barley brew. That's good. That was a good one. I am drinking a um, surly before I die tonight. I messed I up and drinking... I didn't go get go go ahead, Corey. I am drinking the Iron Maiden Robinson's Trooper beer, which is an, a British brown ale in the the same style as a Newcastle. Delicious. Uh, I'm glad that Caden is uh, chaotic good because there's no laws when you're on the claws uh, of, of a lime variety. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do it? Did I joke good? He did it. He did it. Yay. Mom's going to be so proud. So, uh, Corey, how about you give us the give us the mechanical bits on Caden Kalian? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, well, as as Alex said, uh, Caden is chaotic good. Uh, or at least he is for another four months or so before alignment just goes away and he just becomes god of drunkenness. Good. His alignment is drunk. His alignment <laughs> is slightly slightly askew because he can't stand up straight. Um, 
And then uh, one of his uh, domains were chaos, charm, good, strength, travel. Uh, in 2E... I have them here. They are cities, oh. freedom, indulgence, and might. There we go. Sorry. Lost uh, travel. Travel is one of the better domains. That's true. Uh, his favorite rep weapon is the rapier as a good swashbuckling god should have. Uh, centers of Worship, Absalom, Andering, Galt, the River Kingdoms, the Shackles, Taldor, Varicia. Just basically anywhere where freedom is the word of the land. Um, he himself was Talden before he ascended. Yeah, they do mention later on that he was bronzed skin. So yeah, that makes sense. Uh, his worshippers include brewers, vintners, barkeeps, innkeepers, and good adventurers. Uh, areas of concern are freedom, ale, wine, and bravery. Uh, edicts are drink. Free slaves and the oppressed, and seek glory and adventures. Uh, his anathema is to waste alcohol, be mean or standoffish when drunk, and own a slave. Uh, his holy symbol is a tankard, usually a little bit stylized, but not always. Uh, and the clerics of his priesthood uh, make use of uh, a practical holy symbols of Caden. They just have tankards strapped to their hip, usually, and you know that that doubles as a holy symbol in a drinking vessel. Um, Gross. Is, is, is Ikmer on HLP a worshipper of Caden? I think they mentioned something like that near, like, at the beginning, but, I mean, I think they... I mean, he, he forgets about the tankard for, like, two books. Yeah. So. Also, he has a very strong connection to Desna as well, so... Well, yeah, I'm now. Not... Uh, I mean, Jason's not actually there yet, so I... Yeah. I, I, I just finished book two, so... Yeah. yeah. Uh, Ikmer's book is book three, so have okay. fun with that. Yeah, um, right on. And uh, his holy animal is a hound. Makes and sense. his sacred colors are silver and tan. Can I swear on this show? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Fucking fucking Caden fucking Kalian. What a guy. <laughs> <laughs> like I, oh, Jason, you mentioned he's brown. He's I has brown, bronze skin. He's tan. He's brown hair. Um, he is, in description, the most generic motherfucker on the planet. Um, no, he is. <laughs> his, his depiction in three point five, where he was like originally incepted, is like it's just a guy. And like yeah. his first edition look is also like just a guy, and his second he like he's just he's just a guy. But like in three point five, he he looks like a background character. He has no distinguishing features whatsoever. He is just a dude. Yeah, it's <laughs> he 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 is, and it makes sense. It makes sense with his like how he became a god. Like it makes total sense that he's just a random looking dude, but. But yeah, it's it's like he is just your average everyday dude. In Firebrand, he's a dude with a dog. He does have a dog. Yeah, His he has a dog true. next to him. He has a In good fun. boy dog. He's a good boy. Is that that's Mastiff. Yeah, yeah. it is. They're called it's a Mastiff K named Thunder. Nice. Caden is one of those dudes who created a breed because he wanted to. Um, well. It's debatable whether he created the breed or Thunder created the breed. Right, yeah. So basically the story goes <laughs> is Caden one day found um, a bunch of stray puppies uh, by a dead mom 
and he went to go like like uh, like retrieve the puppies and you know take care of them and stuff and he saw that they were all really aggressive and growling at him defending the dead corpse of their mom and he was like whoa these puppies are sick because they're all like brave and stuff and i like bravery and so he adopted them anyways he adopted out most of them but he kept the biggest one and named it thunder and then when he became a god the dog which went was only two him. years later yeah just two years later when he became a god and he went to Elysium, he took his dog with him. And then ever since then, a specific breed of dogs called K-Hounds, which are an offshoot of Mastiffs, specifically the with Mastiff the celestial that Thunder template. is. With the Celestial Template. And you can choose them to be riding mounts. It's pretty sick. It's kind of nice. like Pugs, but not as lame. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Aridin. <laughs> I also have a good dog. And I didn't yeah. turn mine into a human. Yeah, don't, they can talk. Oh, they can? Is, yeah. Yep. Uh, which is kind of weird. I went to look up what they look like because I was reading about them. It's like, this one's very boisterous and has a body sense of humor. And so I was like, what do they look like? They're dogs. They look like dogs. <laughs> like, that's it. They're just dogs. Nice. They're red haired. That's it. Yeah. They look like Mastiffs. Just ginger Mastiffs. Okay, they, yeah, fair enough. Well, they, they kind of have a little more fur than most Mastiffs. Yeah, um, they actually, they they look more like Irish Wolfhounds than anything, but they're in lore is supposed to be an offshoot of a Mastiff, which I don't know why the artist then drew something that looks like a totally different dog, but, you know. <laughs> whatever. I didn't draw it. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that story is one of the, the few little bits of, of lore that Caden has, um. Yeah, he doesn't have much. He, he's only been around for 2,000 years as a god. But, before we get to that, we should talk about the piece of lore that is the biggest piece of his lore. And that's just how he became a god, because. Okay. His story okay. of how he became a god is just wonderful. Ascension Day. Yeah. Uh, which is 11 Kuthona, by the way, which, which so translates to our calendar as 11 of December. No, yeah. keep so in mind, that's probably not the day he actually ascended. That's just right. the day everyone's kind that's, of assumed it happened. Yeah, no that's the day remembers. everyone celebrates it. Um... Yeah, because he because so, he he started off as a he started off as kind of a as a sellsword, kind of a mercenary type, <laughs> um, and he he wasn't great at it. He well, he, he had was, a, but he, he had just, a conscience. Yeah, he had a conscience. He so <laughs> yeah, so he didn't make the best mercenary and the best sellsword because he had a conscience. He 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 only. He only would do what was right. He like we talked about how he doesn't like slavery. He he has this absolutely abhors it. That's like he has his only this, rule. He has no this like slaves. He has this like this almost like like uh, United States love affair with freedom. <laughs> like it's it's like very like USA American love affair with freedom, like. So anything that freedom. doesn't involve freedom, like he won't, he won't take part in it. So if you're like forcing somebody to do something, like that, if that was the job, yeah, he's not gonna do it. So he, it's he, he also was, he was hates being told what to do. Yeah, so that I don't know why he became a sellsword and a mercenary. Well, there's like, a story yeah. where he uh, he was doing a job. And then he found out the person who hired him had slaves. So he used the money he got from the slave or from the job and then bought the slaves and then went back into the dude's house in the nighttime and robbed him so that he wouldn't have gotten profit from the slaves that he freed. <laughs> I love him. Very Robin Hood of him. Uh, but yeah, like he was celebrating in Absalom. Yeah, he was just, just hanging out with some friends and uh, getting drinking. drunk at a tavern. 
I ha- um, we'll put a pin in this because I have a I have a theory, a personal theory about why he was drinking in this tavern, and there is a reason, not just because he does that because he's an alcoholic. I have I do have a theory. <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. All right, so, we'll whiteboard. We'll whiteboard that. Yeah, we'll put, so put a pin he, in that. He's out drinking with friends, and the night of drinking escalates to a series of dares. And the, we'll, we'll also we'll also whiteboard the series of dares because we're going to come back to that because this is kind of an overarching theme series of dares it, that that's an overarching theme with Caden and we'll yeah we'll come back to that point <laughs> and the final dare was his buddy dared him to take the test of the star stone so he did and he. Probably, rather than say, hold my beer, I'll be right back, he probably chugged it and gave the empty mug to his friend, stumbled into the Star Stone somehow, yeah. and three days later, he waltzes out of the Star Stone Cathedral, now a god... With no memory of how it happened. Laughing. Specifically laughing. He laughing out of the because castle he's... laughing. <laughs> he was blackout drunk and just completely blackout drunk, took the test, succeeded, came out of the cathedral, a god, has no idea how. Uh, and Phenomenal. And before we go further, I do want to mention that the the bar in which he, or at least the supposed bar, the bar that claims fame as the bar that he was drinking at before the test, has now become known as Cadence Hall. It is a bar in Absalom. Um, it is also the center of Caden's worship in the inner sea, because... They claim to be the bar where he was getting drunk before he took his test. Um, and, uh, Cadence Hall is covered in Temples of the Inner Sea with some beautiful art of both the, the temple itself and the high priestess of the temple. But there are a couple of things that I want to mention about the temple specifically. The first is that it has brought... It has burned to the ground no less than 14 times. Um, the most recent was about three years ago. Uh, hmm. And every time it burns to the ground, it gets rebuilt at the same location and it gets rebuilt out of wood to honor the tradition of the temple as it was when Caden drank there. Uh... Which is why it continues to burn down. And there's a giant fire pit in the middle of the temple. Because... <laughs> why not? Um, but it, it's burned down repeatedly, but it always gets rebuilt almost immediately. Um, the second thing is that they have a... They have a coat check area, basically. Where you, you check your your weapons and your coat and your your gear, your haversacks. And then every morning at dawn when the bar closes, because that's what Time Cadence Hall closes, is dawn. Um for the for the tavern keepers to clean and then get some sleep before reopening in early afternoon. Um Every morning at dawn, anything that is left in the coat check area uh, gets claimed by the bar. And there are placards above the coat check area that say, leave it and loan it. Because what the bar does with all of that gear that gets left behind by drunks is they loan it to new adventurers who need, need a shield or need their first sword or... Their armor got destroyed, so they need a new set of armor. Um, they just Very have cool. a, a loan to adventurers policy. And typically the loans are supposed to be 90 days, but if you 
if you don't return it within 90 days, they don't really worry about it. I mean, you're probably um, They dead. just expect you to have a good story when you do return it. I mean, you um, went out adventuring with loaned gear. The chances of living are slim. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the, the last thing is... Um, Caden has an affinity for orphans. Um, yeah. <laughs> some people say that it's because he might have been an orphan as a youth... Um, nobody really knows if that is the case or not, but mm -hmm. it, it's a common conception of the god as his parents died young and he was raised in an orphanage, and that's why he really, really takes orphans to heart, and a lot of orphanages get started in his name. And Cadence Hall has two places where they collect money for orphanages. The first is a wishing well. Um in which all of the coins that get thrown into the well get donated to local orphanages in Caden's name. Um, the second is the beer garden. And the Hell beer yeah. garden has three rotating kegs from either new brewers or old brewers trying a new brew. Um, and they are they are free taps with a donation box um and it it spurs competition competition between brewers to who can raise the most money for orphanages in Caden's name via their new brews so it, it's a nice little fun thing uh um, yeah that Caden's hall does uh very cool yeah, I want to, um, and tangentially, I want to um, jump on this, the idea that he was an orphan because potentially his parents passed away. One of the things you'll notice is that he's the only god that has a surname. He, like, every other god is like Madonna or Prince. They just have <laughs> Or Cher. Don't name. forget about Cher. And it's the artist formerly known as Prince. He's he's he passed away, and you don't need to prince me. I'm from Minnesota. I know Prince. <laughs> he also <laughs> went back to Prince, prince after prince. using yeah, the exactly. symbol for like three years. <laughs> um, but he's the only god that that decided to keep his surname when he ascended to godhood, and nobody really knows why. But the common the common theory is that it's because he wanted to continue to honor his parents. And again, so the, the idea is he might have lost his parents and he wanted to continue to honor his parents. At least that's one of the ideas, one of the theories behind it. And if, you know... Going on this this idea that he is Talden, he's he's Talden, and if he's coming from that sort of you know Southern European kind of cultural reference, a surname would would be very important. So uh, yes, well, I would posit that potentially. It's not because so here's the thing about the 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 orphanages that he set up in Caden's name is that a lot of uh, a, another reason why it's interesting that he has a surname is that there are lots of Kalians all across Galarian because mm -hmm. there'll be an orphanage and then when you leave the orphanage oftentimes you'll take his name as your last name and Caden has no problem with that because he loves orphans and so my theory is that. His parents might have died, or, well, I mean, his parents would have had, like, to be fair, this is a fantasy setting. Orphans are, like, like most a people are dozen. orphans. Like, let's be real. Um, so, having an orphanage, maybe it was the name of the people who ran the orphanage, or maybe it was the people that adopted him from the orphanage. Mm -hmm. My theory is that it was the name of the orphanage that he left. There's also one other theory to why he has a last name that has nothing to do with orphans. 
this is a good one. And it actually is on brand with him as well, and probably has more evidence in relation to his religion than anything else. Uh, the other theory is that it was to distinguish himself from some other Caden that he really just didn't fucking like. <laughs> so he's like, no, no, I am Caden Kalian. Say my last name with respect. <laughs> it's Caden with a C, not a K. <laughs> Which, like, considering that his main rule is don't be a dick, no slaves, that kind of fits in with the branding of, like, I don't want to be associated with that asshole. Yeah. Very much so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, he um, he ascended. He ascended. He has no idea why, and he 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 was blackout drunk when it happened. Okay, can we go back to my pin then? Yeah, let's go back to your pin. Okay, um, so theory has it that the reason he was drinking at the bar and got in this argument with his buddy in the first place is because he recently was scorned from a relationship with someone. And the theory goes is that he went to go hit on Calistria and got rejected. And so he was drinking at the bar and he was like mad and he was all pissed off and upset because he was drinking at the bar. And then his buddy dared him to take the Star Stone so he could get Calistria's attention. That's my theory. But, but don't tell him that, though. Well, he, yeah, don't. I don't, don't... Know. You tell him like th that and alcohol will taste like sewage for the next year for you. Well, I mean, he probably doesn't remember anyways. Well, no, it, it <laughs> literally says in Inner Sea Gods that he really hates that rumor. <laughs> well, I There's think probably it's some true. truth to it, <laughs> because that's I why think he it's hates true. it so much. Yeah. You can't um, put it in there and be like, but this is fake. It's a rumor. He doesn't, he's actually really sensitive about it. Don't mention it. It's not true. I swear. Like, okay, buddy. Yeah, all right. Okay. I'm going to go hang out with the bee lady real quick. <laughs> and, and speaking of his relations with other gods. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he's had lots. Uh, he's, had, he's had quite a few trysts. So he's friendly with the lesbian polycule. Uh... He loves to serenade Shalin. He mm -hmm. is friendly with Desna and Saren Ray. Um, th there's no real uh, evidence to say that he's gotten with any of them, but he probably has. Well, I'll put a uh, pin in that. I have a theory. Uh, he absolutely has gotten with Callistria now that he has ascended to godhood. On multiple occasions, mm -hmm. and usually it ends up biting him in the ass. Well, yeah, no um, shit. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's gotten with Besmara, too. Pretty sure he's gotten with Besmara. Uh, what's the dwarf god that he's gotten with? Yeah, Trude. I was listening to this cool Trude. podcast, Dubious <laughs> Knowledge, earlier today, and they were talking about Torag. <laughs> and I didn't realize that he's bi, because he's, the... he's with some other dude, right? Uh, so Torag's youngest son, Trude, the dwarven god of bravery and strength. That makes uh, sense. He, uh, he, he, yeah, he hooked up with Caden. They, um, <laughs> they had a fling and, um, his older sister is in full support of that, of that relationship. Yeah. Oh yeah, sister. So. So like Kate Caden will sleep with anyone, it seems. Um as long oh, he's as they're a slut. As he long is... as they are at least neutral of heart. I would say yes. good of heart, but uh clearly well, that's not his line in the sand when uh I don't think he really cares. and Mesmara are on the list. Well they they, they even say in the inner sea gods that the real the only deity he really does not like is Asmodeus. <laughs> he fucking hates Asmodeus and he will do anything to piss that motherfucker off. Well I love so he, he steers clear of most evil gods just because he's like, I don't want to deal with that shit. I don't want any part of that. But Asmodeus, who he hates the most, he goes out of his way to fuck with. Yep. 
like, to it's twerk like a fucking... the nose of, I think, was the actual line in the uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's like Bugs a Bugs Bunny scenario, like yep. just to <laughs> shit with, just to fuck with them. Um, and speaking of devils, uh, one of the other myths of Caden. Oh, this one's is, dope. Is the ballad of Salakotal's fall. And I read this earlier today, and I absolutely love it. Yeah, uh, this one's awesome. A few hundred years after he became a god, uh, a duke of hell named Salakotal got concerned because he was the god of... Uh, the god of mean drunks, basically. The god of the temptations of wine. Um, and so the devil here, uh, challenged Caden to a duel to the death, uh, to take place on neutral ground and be judged by Phrasma. Caden said, you know what, how about this instead? Uh, we have a game of dueling dares. And if Caden lost, he said he would... He would surrender himself to the blade of Salakotal. Again, and... again, the, the the theme of dares comes back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The devil agreed. And one by one, they escalated their dares. Salakotals were cunning and risky. Cadens were courageous and usually subtly insulting. <laughs> <laughs> and every time Caden made a dare, he would take a swig out of his tanker. Drink. And eventually the devil just got pissed off at all of the insults that were being hurled his way. And he attacked. And he thought that they were even they were evenly matched. Uh, but Caden whipped out his rapier. Cut the ma or cut the devil's wings off, and then killed him, and then used the bones of his wings to make devil slaying crossbow bolts for his clerics. Corey, you're underselling it. He didn't just like <laughs> use his rapier and killed him. He ripped the devil's wings off and beat him to death with them. Yes, yes, that 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 is a. That is a point that I missed there. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> it's very like that that issue of Sandman where he goes to hell and has like mm -hmm. the rap battle. That or was whatever. my thought too. It was very yeah. much yeah. that same. I, I'm guessing that the that Sean K. Reynolds, when he wrote the Caden uh, article in Second Darkness, which is where this little snippet came from, I think it's more uh, likely that guessing... Neil Gaiman was a big fan that Sean K. Reynolds was a fan of Sandman and took inspiration from that. Would not surprise me. Would not surprise uh, me at all. <laughs> but yeah, uh, so you I, you, I love you that up... story so much. The invention of the Bon Mo, I think. <laughs> so you bring up this idea the 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 point <laughs> that he doesn't like mean spirited drunks. So one of the no. one of the Caden being the god of alcohol and freedom, he is very much in line with good humored, Temperance. friendly, outgoing, boisterous, even flirtatious drunks, but not, not in the mean spirited, the bullying, the teetotalers, those kinds of folks. So if it, it so. That is <clears throat> so that that brings up the the second point I wanted to bring. Um, the second part that I wanted to bring up is yes, he is the god of alcohol and good times. Let laissez le bon temps rouler, but his, his church does go out of its way when it comes to alcoholism. So, mm -hmm. like, they actually say in there that his priests 
do provide care and therapy for local alcoholics who have issues with drink. They they'll yeah. they will take them in. They will provide that care. They will help. They them. will use magic to help get them over the hump. Yeah, they they they, they they'll 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 be there to help them recover from that addiction, which I think is a very a very great point that when we you know when it comes to addiction and it comes to illness like this um it's often forgotten about and i do like that they that they went out of their way to point that out that yeah even though he is the god of wine and beer and alcohol he's also there to provide to provide care for those who who have an issue and um who have an addiction to those things yeah. Well, it's fun that you bring that up because I want to quickly take a quick peek into the future and talk a little bit about where he's in Starfinder, because Ooh, Starfinder corner without Heath. Yeah, da 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 football talk. I uh, pass the pigskin to the quarter line. Da 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 football. That's my Heath impression. Um, <laughs> so Caden uh, is very much like the Green Bay Packers because yeah, he's like the Green Bay Packers. He's always drunk. He loves the color green. He can sure pack it in, and he's always won the football. <laughs> Nailed it. The best. <laughs> Anyways. I'm sure he uh, will get a kick out of that. So, Caden, Kalian, and Starfinder, like, I think he, so in first edition, he's basically the god of bards. He's really fun. He's a, He likes to drink and have a good time. Unless you're a bad drunk, he doesn't like it if you're a bad drunk. After the gap, so none of the gods talk about what happened Caden much like with the ascension like he actually will openly talk about how he just doesn't remember and it's not that like he's like I won't tell you how I passed he just doesn't remember how he passed no I was fucking drunk what do you expect exactly with the gap he doesn't remember like and he just straight up doesn't remember but he's like it freaks him out because at this point he's a god and like hangovers being blackout drunk these things are like, they're not uh, things that affect him anymore, and they're also not things that you should strive for as a mem- as a uh, worshiper of Caden Kaylee. Like, getting drunk to the point of, like, losing memory is not a good way to drink. And Caden, kind of, like, as Jason was saying, that's drinking to excess, which, you know, isn't super, super cool in the, in the religion. But after the gap, when Caden couldn't figure out what happened, and he has no idea what happened, he went on, a like, a decade-long bender. And he just drank heavily all the time, so much so that he was neglecting parts of his duties as a deity. And his religion, like his worshippers were like losing powers and like it was really spotty as to like what would actually happen. Like people were falling out of faith because Caden's religion, as we'll talk about later, is very much built around basically there's no real guidelines. So... At one point, it's both very freeing because there's not like a very strict set of rules. But at the second point, it means Caden as a god has to make sure everything is working. And if he is not on top of it, it stops working because there's no boundaries to keep things in place if he's not on top of it. So since yeah. he's on a bender and drunk for decades, his his clerics are like losing powers or they're getting the wrong powers. And he diminishes his clergy to a very, 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 very small sect. I don't think he's even one of the main gods anymore. Like, he's downgraded himself. Yeah. Uh, afterwards, he cleans up and sobers up. And his religion now does still incorporate that drinkingness in it. But he is no longer drinking. He is sober. And he has been. He has a coin to prove it. And... His entire religion now is has turned into rehabilitation, uh, harm reduction policies, and rehab, and oh. that's the main focus of his religion now. Still bravery. He still doesn't like slaves. Uh, he's still cool. Like he's like drinking is not a problem, but he doesn't drink anymore, and he wants to help those who have substance abuse issues of all kinds which oh, I wow. think is way more interesting than the, oh, it's a fun god who became a god by accident. Whoa, 420, blaze it, huh? That is really cool. I had no idea about that. Yeah, he's still, he's he's cool with Hylax because Hylax is cool with everybody and he likes that. 
Um, and he's cool with uh, Angrad, who apparently uh, is the dwarf god now because Toreg, when Galarian left, so did Toreg. He just is gone now. Yeah. Which is sad because that was Caden's drinking buddy. Yeah, we should. Uh, I should. That's that's a good point too because we should mention that even though Caden is the god of good times and alcohol and um, and freedom, he's not really worshipped by dwarves much at all. <laughs> no. Like he's 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 revered like dwarves respect him because he's a good buddy of torags but he's not really worshiped which you would th- you would you would think he would be because you know um brewers tend to worship caden but no like dwarves they they don't really worship him well the relationship between the two of them is is fascinating because like they're buddies and they ha- like Torag and Caden hate hang out and they drink together and they compare human ale to dwarven ale and they have a good time. Um, in stories, the dwarves when they tell stories about Caden, Caden is portrayed as Torag's sidekick, as like yep. the comic relief sidekick character. So like no one's gonna worship him, but they're all gonna be like you're gonna get little stuffies of him for your kids and little toy like I got my little Caden action figure, but like you're not gonna worship that cartoon character. You're going to worship Toreg, because if I want to make a good beer, I'm going to create one with the god of creation, not with the god of good times and no bad vibes. <laughs> it's, th- this... God of good times and no bad vibes. I love that. Am I Alex. wrong? Am I wrong? No, no, you're not. But what this reminds me of is it reminds me of the Green Hornet, because yes. in the U.S., Kato was the sidekick. Yes. But if you watch the Green Hornet over in Hong Kong... It was called the Kato Show. That's because Kato's badass. Much Kato like, is. Uh, Kato was much a like badass. Torag, and not much like, uh, much like. Okay, I'm gonna come out here and say it. Caden, in in like, I love Caden, and I'm 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 here for a reason. He sucks. <laughs> he is a <laughs> shitty god. He's not good at it. Uh, no. Well, yeah, he just doesn't want to fucking do anything, and you can't make him because he's a god. Well, like because uh, he, he had because freedom, Corey. Because freedom. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's so hard, strong into freedom. Because if he's not, then he's gonna have to actually start taking responsibility. Though he does, he makes a point about how you gotta take responsibility. Because as he is a god of chaos, he's not a god of chaos to the point of stupidity. Like he's like everyone has mm-hmm. to know when to stop, and it's mm-hmm. easy to get manipulated if you take every single dare. There's actually a saying they have, which is, uh, what is it? It's, um, it's, uh, I, it's like, it I'm brave, is... but I'm not that brave. Um, and it's like, I'm not, where is it? It is, um, gosh, um, it's like, I'm brave, but I'm not Caden brave. Cause usually when yeah. you get in an argument Similar with someone, to that, yeah. oh yeah, yeah uh, here it is. Me... So, so, the, so the text reads that, um, the clergy has a tradition of, of drinking contests and dueling dares or boasting contests in, a, in all in good fun and never with the intent to harm or humiliate. In contests that become heated, a competitor who feels the contest has gone too far may suggest that the other person take the test of the star stone, at which point the opponent usually says, I'm great, but not so great as Caden Kalian, refusing the dare and ending the contest honorably, usually buying the dare a drink in the hopes of becoming comrades. <laughs> yeah, I am great, but not so great as Caden Kaylee. I think Caden, like, so here's the thing. His religion and... is, sorry, Corey, uh, his religion is set up in a way that there is no actual rules aside from no slavery. Like, that is his only actual hard, fast rule is no slaves, which, I mean, you'd think would be an easy rule to follow. I mean, I've been alive for this long, and I don't own any slaves, so it can't be that hard. Um, <laughs> so, but, like, even his holy text is, it's just, it's just a plaque. It's just a plaque on, the, on a The on placard the of wisdom. Bar. Yeah, and Six, it, seven, it eight, just nine, says ten, on it, 11, don't 12, let rules 13, get in the way of 14, enjoying 15, 16, what is truly 17, good in life. 18. Um, but 
Sometimes it also... it's a bit more than that. Sometimes it's a bit less than that. Yeah, That's usually it, it, the first line. I have I I see here in my text that there's 18 words in total. <laughs> His entire holy text is 18 words. Do good, enjoy life, have and drink now and then, and stand up for what you believe in. Yeah. So sometimes bartenders will write on the plaque as well, like also. Sixteen dollars off on Fridays for um, potato skins. And, <laughs> and Caden's like, "Cool. If that works for you, buddy, that works for you. As long as there's no slaves involved, we're good." Like, yeah. Yep. So people uh, adapt this thing to make it more suitable. Uh, the stories of Caden are often changed to be more appropriate to the setting that it belongs in. It talks about how bards of Caden Kalian will tell stories about him, but using terminology, lingo settings, and and like geology from where they're from. And that you can tell where a Caden Kalian bard is from based on what type of stories they'll tell you. And Caden yeah. loves that shit. He loves that it's none of it is consistent. And then none of it makes sense. And it's not like Norgorber where Norgorber's like, I'm making secrets because I don't want anyone to know about this shit. Caden doesn't care. He just thinks it's funny that no one remembers. Like, <laughs> he doesn't, he really doesn't give a shit. Uh, and going back to, to what you said about, uh, about backing off when it is apt to actually back off that goes back to that temperance thing where yes he's the god of drinking and god of merriment but he knows when to cut people off he knows when to stop and that holds true in all aspects of his godhood not just the merriment part because also as the god of bravery like, he encourages you to adventure. He encourages you to fight for what's right. He encourages you to put your life on the line and in service of what you believe in. But he's not the god of reckless endangerment. No. He's the god of bravery, not stupidity. And yeah. so... I think and I think that all comes ties back to Alex's point. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I interrupted you. I apologize. How dare you, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like it, it ties back to that where he he encourages his followers to be brave. He encourages them to get drunk, but he also encourages them to know their limits and to not go beyond their limits and that if something is too dangerous you back out because you're no good to him as a follower if you're dead and you're no good to the world if you're dead so if the correct or if the option is die or run away there is no shame in running away right and I think that that this point goes goes all the way back to what Alex was saying that the religion is so fucking chaotic there is there is no structure whatsoever to the at church there's no at structure all. to the church at all that Caden has this entire this entire faith system on his shoulders that everything is relying on on him and so if he is out of place or not in the right headspace for even a moment, things start to crumble and fall. Like, and I think that it's an excellent point, and I'm really glad that the writers thought about that and realized that when they when they created the gap and created Starfinder, because like when you when you when you the section on the church, there's there's no there's there is no church. Like it's it's Any basically bar just or priests. In- is and is not a Caden Kalian church at the same time. It's like Schrodinger's cleric. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's like there, there, yeah. there's really only one official church, and it's Caden's Hall. 
Exactly. That's the only like, that's one. That's the only one that you know right when you enter that it is always going to be a church. Well, I would but also it's argue also that the always orphanages... going to be a fucking tavern. <laughs> the specific orphanages that are named after him, I would also consider those churches because not every orphanage can be a church where every bar can be a church. Um, in fact, Dave, um, you might be in one right now. And also, most breweries often have a room dedicated to Yeah. yeah except, have, they... for two, except for Two Nights Brewery in Sandpoint, oddly enough, which is run by two Abadarians. Well, yeah, it's profitable. It's, they're making sesh, okay? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Just two yeah, college it's... boys to have it with a dream. Oh, but yeah, no. it's, it's just, it's just like, like, unlike Torag, which last episode, which is why it's on my mind, there is a very, there is a very structured system to Torag's church. And it's very structured like the military. Cadence is very much like Besmara, right? There, there is like, there is no structure. It's so chaotic and there's no titles. No titles whatsoever. Like uh, well, you can keep your title you, if you're a doctor. Yeah. You can still be called doctor, whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. If you have a title from another organization, you usually you keep use it. that. Yeah. Like if you are a guild member, you can be or a guild Professor master so or something. So. Um, although the sandwich the high priestess Sandra. of the of Cadence Hall is known as Sister because she refers. Or she prefers that to High Priestess. <laughs> okay, I, I take it back. There is one bit of structure. Meals are always begun with a toast. Yep. That, th there it is. That's the structure. <laughs> Every meal also, has to start with a toast. No slaves. And no slaves. And no slaves. <laughs> that is one hard and fast rule. I'm sure if you forget to toast in the morning, I'm sure he'll forgive you. <laughs> but True. if you're like I'm gonna buy Jimmy over there and make him do my laundry I don't think he'll be cool with that <laughs> also the the holy journal of Cadence Hall is also the bar tap <laughs> <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> so something that you brought up Jason that I kind of want to go back to is that you said that it was cool that the writers made that choice about making him kind of change and grow and adapt I also think that it's a really great idea, and I think that Caden is, like, I don't know this for sure, this is just me speculating, but this is, I believe Caden fills a certain role in a D&D 3.5 setting, and that's why he was invented. I don't think he's like a Desna or a Phrasma or something like that, where it was like James Jacobs' head child, and he's like, I love this character, I'm gonna make it real. I think it was, we needed an allegory for Bacchus. And we needed a type of uh, god that anyone could worship and be an adventurer. Hmm. And, like, anything is fine. Like, if you're a cleric of Caden Kalian, it's like, I need to play a healer, but I don't want to be, like, a fucking stiff healer. I don't want to, like, actually know what my religion is. You're a wor you worship Caden Kalian. And then nothing you do is wrong as long as you don't buy a slave. Which, like I said, not hard to do. Right. And also, it's... He's also an easy go-to god for any other type of adventure. Oh, yeah. Like, I call him the god um, of bards. Though, weirdly, yeah. only 1 in 20 that follow him are a bard. <laughs> Which is odd to uh, me. I play a devout... A devout follower of Caden in an Age of Ashes campaign. Uh, swashbuckler. Yeah, perfect fit for a swashbuckler. Mm -hmm. um, also, champion dedication. So, she very there much is uh, liberator. Liberator. Yep. Uh, liberator and like she is nobility in Katapesh. <laughs> and the black sheep of the family because she she absolutely despises slavery. So she. She has her own manor that was that she bought from her mom, um, and turned it into an underground railroad stop. I, I have a player. 
in my Crimson Throne game, who their character recently got murdered because finally. Um, and so for their backup, they pulled out a paladin because they're in an area of the game where a paladin mm -hmm. was really convenient. Mm -hmm. um, and so they made this paladin. They made him like, "What god do you worship?" And they're like, "Oh, I don't. I didn't think that about about that part." I'm like, "Well, you're a paladin. You gotta worship a god." Right. And so we end, we settled on Caden Kalian because it was the least amount of work. And the backstory <laughs> is is that she was uh, it was a tiefling who was just naturally good at smashing things, and then went to a church of Caden Kalian, which is any bar. Um, and got dared uh, to join the clergy, which she did, because they're like, I d if you're so whatever, join the clergy then. And she's like, okay. And the thing is, with Kate and Kaylee, now you're in. Yeah, and the so god of like, YOLO. Yeah, and so they're like, oh, well, shit, they got me on that one. And then she kept being, and they were like, well, fine, go do this thing then. And then she would do it. And they were like, oh, well, why don't you go to the evil undead castle and, and, and rid it of evil then? And she's like, okay. And then she did. Because, like Jason said, a series of dares. Exactly. Yes, and slavery. Wonder, yes, no. I wonder if that's if that's the case, though. It makes me wonder if that's the case with each one of the three ascended gods. If they just kind of fill the role. It's just like we need a really good archetypal, stereotypical paladin god. I Iomide. don't think so. Because, like, when I say that he fills that role, I'm saying from a writing perspective of, like, yeah. we are converting 3.5 to our own setting of 3.5. 3.5 has the Greek pantheon, so if you worship back, it's what you're going to worship in Pathfinder, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 yeah. But I see what you're saying there, in which case I think Caden has the least uh, solid aspect that he is a god of at it any of the gods period i would hear freedom <laughs> maybe maybe bravery and maybe freedom but like he's but there are also drinking. other gods of freedom like desna but, yeah. also has that in her portfolio like so Desna's a better god of travel uh we have freedom bravery like i think like there's Trude's a better god of bravery yeah uh, even like so okay we're gonna go back to that pin I took out way long ago see I'm, I'm bringing it back now to that pin I did a long time ago talking about relationships uh, I have a theory and I, I'm not the only one who has this theory because I googled it um, <laughs> that Caden also got together with Desna because there is a oh. god named Kurgas oh, sure. and he is known as the strong man and he's basically the mm -hmm. god of Olympics um it, and to put it in short, he's the god of doing sports and being good at sports and, and, and making gains and doing sports. Mm -hmm. That's his job. And Caden, Kaelin, and Desna thought he was so cool and so good at sports, they decided to make him a god. And the theory is, is that the reason they even paid attention to this guy in the first place, who was doing shit that had nothing to do with anything Caden or Desna were involved with, but yet for some reason they decided to turn on their TV and watch him do the ring toss... So, why did they have an invested, like, anything in this guy, and then have so much to, to raise him to godhood? Like, there are so many different people that are good at things, but, like, winning the cup at your sporting event usually doesn't end with you becoming Jesus. So, like, why, why, such, a, why such a big boon for that dude? So, the theory is, is that it's because yeah. it's their kid. And you don't ascend to godhood, he just always was. Huh. That's fascinating, yeah. Yeah, here he is. Look at him. Look at the, him with the discus. Yeah, man. Look at that. He He's a beefcake. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, there he is. What a guy. Yeah, yeah this whole he, deal is... You've is got gods and magic. I've got uh, inner sea fates. <laughs> oh, there you go. He's a beefcake. But yeah, yeah so that's the theory that he's doing with Desna. It's weird, though, like, we kind of mentioned this before, that there's not a whole lot on Caden, because he hasn't really done a whole lot. Like, having sex with Desna and having an Olympic kid is probably the only thing he's ever actually done in canon 
that has affected the game setting in any way. Like, since he yeah. became a god, he hasn't done anything. Yeah, sorry, there will be no spoiler corner, because he There's hasn't nothing to done spoil. <laughs> the only thing that's considered maybe a spoiler is that he got sober, which, like, good for him. Like... <laughs> That's and that's and that's not really a spoiler. That's Starfinder. Yeah, that's canon. I think it's weird um, though because you think out of all the gods, he would be the one that would interact the most with mortals. Yeah, and they actually say that he he doesn't. Yeah, like he kind of does, but he he like he talks to you. That, I think it's funny if the he needs to get the church or the religion to come to any kind of consensus. He just has to mentally tell all of them in a dream what to do because the religion has no structure. So he exactly. just has to be like, okay, I need to, and like, he's probably like sitting in Elysium and like Desna shows up and like, hey, did God you tell damn it, get your shit together, guys. Did you tell your priest to pick up the milk on the way home? And he's like, fuck, okay, okay, everyone, shut up for a second, I need a minute. And he just kind of, like, focuses really hard. And then every, every Kate and Caleb worshiper is like, pick up milk, peas, and cheese. And he's like, okay, I did it. You happy now, Desna? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's no structure. Like, Torag can at least, like, show himself to his, for to his forgers yeah. and, and to his smithies and... If you worship Torag and you need to speak to him, there is a way that you can call him. If yeah. you want to talk to Caden, you kind of just have to yell really loud and hope he's paying attention. <laughs> Which he probably isn't. <laughs> Though sometimes he might. Like, he does sometimes, like, if if something catches his attention, like a rebellion or a coup or something where someone's mm -hmm. being oppressed, he'll be like, yeah, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll make that help. Uh, that, I'll make that, make that cool. But, like... Sometimes. <laughs> That's why every once in a while. Kind of uh, buddy, buddy Christ, buddy Christ, the Buddy Christ uh, is the perfect uh, effigy for Caden. That's Caden. Also, Caden, the buddy Christ. Uh, one of the things that, one of the examples of ways that he occasionally interferes with mortal life is by extending the life of a keg. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, like, you need to hold out because you're in a to siege keep, or something. To keep them safe during a siege, or to keep them in a safe space where he knows that if they they went outside, they would likely die. He will just... Nope! The keg's suddenly full again. You, you can't go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's shit, dude. Did, we, did you just tap another one? No, I didn't tap another one. <laughs> it just... It's full! <laughs> I do love too that if if uh, if you worship Caden and basically and this is the Pathfinder universe so like like we've established if you say I want to worship Caden today and I promise not to have a slave or be a dick you now worship Caden that just happens so if you go to the bar and you're like I'm gonna tie one on with the girlfriends and we're gonna get turned. And I promise to not be a dick and do good vibes only and not buy any slaves today, looking at you, Becky, then you won't get a hangover, <laughs> all of your beer will taste good, and you won't get even that drunk. The night well, sky will the night sky will feel brisker and air tastes sweeter. Smell sweeter. Like But however, if you piss him off beer tastes like vinegar your wine is going to taste like vinegar your beer is going to taste like sewage and you're you gonna wake up with the worst fucking hangover of your life you're gonna wake up with the worst hangover of your life after a night of not drinking you don't even like yeah. you don't even have to go to bed sometimes if you just piss like if you're a slaver and you're being a dick because you're like i'm a slaver and i'm a dick he'll just make you hungover like yeah, you could so... be celibate and he'll be like you're hung for now yeah, that's a, that's a that's a good point because I just brought up the curses. Oh just, my god, they're so fun. They're so the, petty. <laughs> so the Caden's minor curse is exactly what Alex just said. You just wake up with a hangover. It's uh yeah you 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 raised his displeasure and it's just it's like he had a hard night's worth of drinking. His Even moderate curse. Didn't. His mo yeah exactly. His moderate curse is you're afflicted with cowardice. Mechanically, what that means is that if you roll critical success on a saving throw against the fear effect, you get a regular success instead. And each time you roll a failure, 
you get a critical failure. His major curse <laughs> is Caden curses you to suffer in the presence of drinking, making it hard for you to bear entering any tavern. Whenever any creature drinks alcohol within a hundred feet of you, you suffer all negative effects from that alcohol instead. This doesn't apply if the creature gains any special effect from drinking that alcohol. There's in the book, it talks about how like he will curse people who are being like oppressive by making them look really stupid. Uh, by like giving them a blemish or like like making them flub a line during a speech something like that and then if they repent it immediately goes away <laughs> so yeah, um I... do you remember the um do you remember the daily devotions like we, yeah, we had that right conversation here. Yeah, what what are what are Caden's daily devotions? Caden <laughs> it, it's basically I'll I'll read it to you. Uh, you sing a song in praise of freedom, bravery, and your God's glory and good looks. The song must be audible to those nearby, friend or foe. Between stanzas, you must pause to drink from a full mug of ale, wine, or other spirit. When the song is done, drink the remaining alcohol while mentally composing the song you'll sing on the morrow. If a creature is attracted by your song, do your best to engage it in conversation about the merits of Caden Kalian. If hostilities become inevitable, leap, leap, leap boldly into the fight without hesitation, and you gain a plus four bonus on saving throws against poison effects. Okay. Yeah. So, it's basically not. One in twenty people are bards. That baffles me. Also, uh, you think there'd be more bards? The evangelist than boon for the evangelist prestige class that he that existed in one e. Uh, one of them is drinking buddy. Yep. Once per day, as a standard action, you create an illusory double of yourself that appears in a square adjacent to you. Your double acts on your initiative count and can move up to your speed each round. It always attempts to flank with you. It must use acrobatics to avoid an attack of opportunity. Uh, it uses your bonus if it does. Uh, it can't attack, but it still provides the bonus for flanking. Just. But. I just love that it's named Drinking Buddy. You're a loser double to just yeah. hang out and have a good time with. So, I, so yeah, again, this is this is one of. Another thing that's like. Th this daily devotion is nothing. Where it's like Lamashtu wants you to actually, like, sacrifice and go through this yeah. ritual. Beelzebub, Sacrifice. you have to cake your arms in, like, blood and have the flies pick your flesh off of them for, like, an hour. Yeah. If you want to do an obedience to Beelzebub. Caden, you sing a song. Norgorver is my favorite, but I'll save that if I ever come back for Norgorver. You are, we got you on, you we got are coming together. back. We've already discussed this. If I ever get invited to come back to Norgorver, I would love to come back. Any, I'm glad to, I'm, my calendar's open if you just invite me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's fascinating because I always describe him as the god of bards because he is what you think of when you think of a bard. Uh, but he... Like, there's a whole thing about what a bard does in, like, in Caden Kalian. Uh, in the 3.5, and so in 2nd edition, or in 1st edition, 2nd Darkness, the second book is what introduced Caden Kalian, which was still 3.5 time. Um, mm -hmm. In this one, it talks about <laughs> specifically what a bard's role in the religion is. And bards, it's, it's weird because it says there's not a lot of them. Like, not a lot of bards worship Caden Kalian, which is like, that seems like what a bard, like, how, why? Everything that you are already doing with is Caden Kalian. Uh, but yeah. they think that they were the first people to, like, tell people about his ascension, and then think that because they were the ones to broadcast his ascension to godhood, that they hold a very special place in his, like, Elysium or whatever. Um, though there's one other thing about his 3.5 origins that I want to bring up that I think are fun is that I didn't know this until I did my homework, but Caden Kalian is where the class of a cavalier comes from. No, it's Chevalier. Uh, I don't drive that kind of car.
Interesting. But it's a prestige class you can take. It gives you three levels. You basically get... Uh, it's like a mixture of a paladin and a bard. Which, oh, a, cheva a chevalier? Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Which is much different than what I... Than a cavalier, a cavalier. yes. A cavalier is not what I meant to say. That's ride yeah. horsey. Yeah. <laughs> so if you rode a dog, that would be Katie. So, I think, um... I did want to bring up uh, Elysium, because we've mentioned that a few times. And Caden's Caden's plane or his his realm on Elysium is 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 interesting because it's split up into two pieces. So there is the center piece, which is kind of like a an urban cityscape, which is mostly filled with bars and breweries and feast halls and feast halls. And that's where, you know, the the people in the afterlife can you know, tell tales and boasts and and drink and be merry and party and just, you know, whatever you would expect. Um, and then on the outer ring outside of that cityscape is it's, it's a battlefield. And here is where um, those those in the afterlife if you're dared to like fight these like beasts and creatures, that's where that takes place. They can, you, you can do duels there, um, but you would also um, take on challenges and dares in these fields of battle. It's 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 interesting. It's not what I expected when I I expected the cityscape. I did not expect to feel the battle around the cityscape. Well, it's like it's not really battle. It's more like 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 settling drunken bar fights. Yeah. Though it does talk about how like there's azadas and stuff that will show up and be and like dare people to like test their metal and stuff. Which that's fun. Yeah, it's it's um yeah. So it it really it really reminded me of like Valhalla. If it's yeah. like so you get you got like the the you know you got the longhouse the viking longhouse where you drink and you eat and you party and then afterwards you just go out into the field and fight yeah it's a very canadian thing to do <laughs> uh i also want to talk a little bit about uh some friends of caden yes um, yes the planar allies because, yeah, there's a couple. Uh, there's uh, there's Little Thunder, which is the uh, puppy of uh, Thunder, his dog. Um, so that that's fun. Uh, Little Thunder is said to be... Uh, he likes to drink. Uh, I don't know why you should have your dog drink. Um, and he's boisterous and has a really uh, dirty sense of humor. Uh, <laughs> there's Luther, the Knight of the Vineyard who uh, is this like kind of like portly knight uh, who it, like he's always super drunk and like really like slurred but when it comes to like fighting he like picks up and really like fights really really good like but he's super drunk all the time uh, there's Balin the spirits of spirits which is a ghost that uh, loves beer the most out of everyone and thinks that beer is the greatest creation ever and so will possess people to experience drinking again, which I think is hilarious. Uh, it reminds me of that um, there's that Skyrim quest where you go drinking with a god and then you wake up the next morning and you don't remember what you did because the god, like, like, you and the god went on a bender. Um, <laughs> but there's my favorite which is Thias, who is known as the Accidental Herald. And she was... Uh, to the Accidental a, God. Yeah. Well, I... So, it doesn't really say why she's the Accidental Herald or why she became the Herald, but she was um, a friend and sex worker of Caden Kalian. And my theory is that she didn't have a choice and that he didn't know what he was doing 
And when he became a god, he just accidentally made her a herald at the same time. Um, and she's not nearly as about drinking. Uh, she's pretty serious. Uh, she's really cool looking. Um, she's this tall woman with straps, and she has specifically five wings. Uh, mm -hmm. Three white ones and two black ones. And she takes... And wields a no wicked-ass halberd. Yeah, it's like a like it's made of glass, I think. Crystal. crystal. It's made of crystal. Sick. Um, so she likes to hang out. She has a good time. She drinks her mai tais like everyone else. But she really hates tyranny and she really hates slavery, like a lot, a lot. So much so that she picked a fight with Asmodeus once, because she was like, "Fuck you, Asmodeus. You are all about the slavery and stuff." And Asmodeus kicked the shit out of her. She used yeah. to have six wings. Now she's got five. Because Asmodeus took one of them and was like, Hey, Caden, remember that dude that you took the wigs off and beat him to death with? I'm going to take this wing. I'm going to beat the shit out of your friend with it. And I'm going to keep it as a present. Just to remind you that this is what freedom is. Locked in a cage like some fucked up zoo. So she, she does... And Theus does spend quite a bit of time, much more so than than Caden, on the material plane, um, in in the in the, the her former looking like her former self. Yeah. So um. So yeah, she does she does spend a lot more time on on this realm, on the mortal realm, much more so. But it's even rumored that that Theus has had uh ha had some trysts with um uh, with. With Aridin, with Calistria, and with Nethys. Like of all of the of, of all of the gods, Nethys. What a like nerd. that's the one I would not expect. She pried him away from also his Aridin. books long enough. I oh, mean Aridin's a slut. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, Aridin's a god of humans and we and we're all humans. We we know uh, we know ourselves. But like <laughs> Nethys? Hey, I mean, like, I, I, like, would, I would think that this would be more interested in reading a book. I mean, <laughs> Harvey Dent's got to have love too, right? That's true. This is true. <laughs> uh, he was like, I got to test this new spell I have, Waves of Ecstasy. And she was like, I'm in. <laughs> well, do we have anything else? Anything we missed? Religion or the, the holidays. Oh, holidays, Caden, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Caden's yeah. got uh, Ascension Day, which is the closest they have to Christmas. Which is right around Christmas. Yeah. Because it's so the it's, 11th of Kuthona. Which is our December 11th. And it's the day um, celebrating Caden's rise to godhood. Uh, he didn't do it on the 11th. It was sometime around then. No one can really remember exactly when. Uh, haha, lol. Very funny. My uh, Calistria probably does. <laughs> yep. She's like, I know exactly the date. I know the fucking time. My, my swashbuckler uh, slash champion of Caden threw a hedonistic party for Ascension Day in Age of Ashes because it just so happened that that was the, the month that we were in Katapesh was Kuthona. Nice. So she threw a banger of a party she uh she ordered a bunch of alcohol and went to a bakery and got uh lewdly shaped donuts for the, well, the party. they're already lewdly shaped uh i i also forgot to mention that the the secret entrance to her uh her safe room that she uses for the underground railroad involves uh, moving the arms of a Caden statue in the, the room next to it in a jack-off motion. Yeah, nice. Makes sense. <laughs> like, it, it was it was a wildly good time. Ascension Day is a blast. I will remember Ascension Day for the rest of my life. Ascension Day is basically like Christmas, but without the religion, which is weird because it's a religious holiday. It's like, <laughs> let's take the partying and the giving gifts to everyone, and let's just make the holiday about that. And Abadar was like, commercialism? I'm all for it. 
Um, and Caden Kalian was like, let's just do that and party the whole time. Um, his other holidays are the first brewing, which much like Caden Kalian doesn't have a set date because why would it? That seems like too much work. Um, but it's usually <laughs> it's after the first harvest. Worshippers of Caden Kalian will make an especially strong brew of whatever they make. Uh, and that will be the first harvest. And that's called first brewing. And they have people come in. And they'll have like a big like kind of dinner how to do about the first brewing. And this one's my favorite one. I mean, aside from Christmas Ascension Day, obviously. Uh, and it's Merry Mead, which is a Druman. It's a Druman holiday um, uh, on the 2nd of Callistral. And it's for and which, the... Which month is Callistral? I think that's February. February, I think. Okay. I think. It's either February or April, one of those. Um and uh, it's where the the more wealthy Caden Kalian worshippers basically do just a huge pub crawl. Yeah, it's February. Oh, nice. But that's only for the rich folk, and they just go pub crawling. So I just imagine all these like really rich kids like, mm, yes, let's go to the next pub for Caden's sake. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get my shit on. Turn down for what I say. <laughs> Uh, oh man uh, turned down for what that was the um that that was the yeah i've dated myself really hard you Nowadays, dated all, it's all about that, we, that song we do was like about, a... that song was big in college for me so yes college. and then uh aphorisms so um we talked and... about one of them yes we did talk about one of them so uh, and then there's in Caden's name, which is it's exactly basically, what you think it is. yeah, exactly. In Caden's name, uh, um, yeah, it's what, it's what it's what you yell before combat. <laughs> um, sweet barley brew, which um, Alex hit us up with at the very very top. Yep, sweet barley brew. It's it's basically a it's just an, an explanation of, to make. Yeah, it's like surprise or amazement. It's like, holy um, shit. And then there's a more serious version of that if it's a real holy shit moment. Which is, by the light of the star stone. Uh, and then there's, may your life be as free as your taps. Um, which is a popular line to end a toast or to use as a fond farewell. Uh, expresses Caden's belief that both people uh, in drink should be unfettered. Uh, it is frequently used as a slogan among rebels. And I think that about does it for Caden. Like, there's not a whole yeah. lot on him. There hasn't really been a whole lot of adventures about him. There, there, there's a, there is a society scenario. Uh, that... Griff ran both me and Alex through. Yeah, it uh, takes Griff place from at the hideous the laughter podcast. Um, that takes place in Caden's Hall. Um, mm -hmm. so it is a blast. Uh, it, it's just a drunken good time, and it's a lot of but fun. But also, it doesn't really have Kaden. any spoilers for Kate. <laughs> Caden's not in it. It just happens at his church. Yeah. Yep. Because because why would he be? It'd be too much work. You do It'd be yeah, too much work priestess. for him to be part of it. The high but... priestess is only the high priestess because she said so. Literally, I could say I'm the highest highest priestess, and that's technically true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they should use him. I mean, more. she is I only wish... ninth level, so that that is fair. I wish that Paizo would use him more, like and actually like do something with him, like. I know, like, you know, they, they're stingy with their gods, and they don't want their gods to, like, show up and, and fuck shit up too much and whatever. But, like, have him do something. Like, he seems like the kind of guy who you could meet at a bar. Like, he seems like the one god out of all of the gods that's most likely that you could actually meet. <laughs> yeah. But they don't use him for anything. And, like, why not? He's so easy to use. I love why they did him in Starfinder, and I hope they do more of that. Like, I hope to see him show up in Starfinder some more. I doubt it, 
especially because of how much you got downgraded in Starfinder. But having a god of drinking go to a god of rehabilitation is like what a character arc. Yeah, that's that's so cool. Especially in a setting where like you can become a pharmacologist. So like drug use <laughs> is more than just like pesh and and vodka. It's like I used my coagulant hyperoxian stimulant and it made my eyeballs explode. Like there's all sorts of weird space drugs. Fucking red eye from uh, Cowboy Bebop and shit. Also, the concept of like, Caden is interesting because he is, he doesn't really tell lies, more so that he just doesn't know what the truth is. Like, he is the most open to talk to out of most of the gods. Like, if you ask Norgerber or Iomade how they pass the Starstone, they'll give you some kind of vague, stoic answer. But if you ask Caden, he'll say, fuck, I don't know, I don't remember. And, like, he'll actually tell you. The only thing he's stingy about is his past. He won't tell you what his past is because he's like, it's not important. We don't need to talk about that right now. And but also, like, he doesn't know. He probably doesn't remember. Or, most likely, it's just not relevant. But you have a character now who has survived the gap and doesn't know and has admitted they don't know. Not like Abadar or Besmara, who is like, uh, is it magic? I'm a god. You can't speak, ask me these questions. Caden Kalian's like, I don't know when it's freaking me out. Like, I don't know when I'm having a bender to the point where my religion falls apart. Public, like, he had a TMZ public freakout in space. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think, um, I think that, that about does it. I think, and I think that's really good, um, that's really good fodder for GMs, too. Um, it's one thing that I, I I try to do and I'm trying to do more frequently in my adventures that I run is to use the gods a little bit more liberally um, beyond just what's written in the text. Uh, you know, have them be a, a more a, a part of the story because why not? Because why I, not? I think I, I, th I think they should be. I think, yeah, especially, I mean, not for every scenario, but, like, I think in most adventures, if you have a scenario in which there is, like, a apocalypse-level threat, then maybe a god should intervene. Like, uh, kind of not really spoilers for Tyrant's Grasp, uh, but Phrasma doesn't show up in it. Um, mm -hmm. Spoilers. Phrasma's not in it. I don't know why not. That book is written in a way where you like you could put her in there so easy, but they just didn't. I know and why, I, but I well, can't yeah, tell I, you. I I I kind of know why. I know that the the press explanation is we don't want to wreck our toys, but like, well, no, no, you, no. It, it's more that they've already used her for that in a different adventure path. <laughs> we'll talk later. Um, <laughs> yeah, in like a year and a half when you get to the end of that one. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Um, but no, like, I'm saying that there's a situation where you have this ultra bad bad guy and it's like, wow, he, it's so, the odds are so insurmountable, there's no way we can beat him. Imagine how much bigger the stakes sound if you have a god fueling you. Like, we're playing Wrath of the Righteous right now, and we just got to a point where Iomade basically said, um, hi, 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 guess what, buddy? You are you got smacked with god powers now. And now the stakes mm -hmm. are immediately higher. Because it's like, not only, like, if we die, it's not like we let down the whatever. We let down everything because we are the ones to fix it. God showed up and said, you gotta fix this shit. So if we don't fix it, no one, like, the, who, is the god gonna do it? They're trying. They're trying through us. Mm -hmm. So have the gods intervene more. I think if I was Daddy Paizo and you said, I want you to do something with Caden Kalian, I would write an adventure in Starfinder where he dies. I would have it start with the death of Caden Kalian and you have to find out why and how he died, and how he died was he was investigating the gap. I don't know what happens there, because I'm not Daddy Paizo, but, like, 
think about that hook and how much you want to play that Starfinder game. Keith is probably right now in his Green Bay Packers pajamas being like, oh man, that sounds amazing. No, I'm the one in the Green Bay Packers pajamas. <laughs> Keith has New Orleans Saints pajamas. But, I think he would um, be offended if you said that to his face. I can't believe that. He's going to cry when he hears this later. I, um, if I were to, I think if I were to write a Pathfinder second edition adventure and bring Caden into it, I think it would have to be a very much a, um, the, your archetypal rebellion type adventure. Yes. Um, but I would, I would have it instead of a rebellion against a, against a kingdom or a nation state, I would have it a rebellion against kind of a corporatocracy kind of having, um, go fuck up Druma. Yeah. Something, something like that where it's like, um, where it's more of a, like a corporatocracy takeover, like, um, you know, the merchant skills getting too powerful and they're starting to weave a little bit too, too much into it. You know, start pulling in the orphanage, the orphan angle with like child labor and that kind of thing. And, and they, to just really piss off Caden. And then you bring him in. I think that's, I think that would be, that would be the adventure I would write. I feel like that though, like with Caden, considering how hard Paizo is moving away from slavery. Yeah. Um, it would be hard to create a scenario that would be like big enough that Caden would give a shit about that isn't slavery. Which is like, why, I, which is why I would say child labor would be the, yeah. But like, if they're staring away from, if they're yeah, staring away from slavery, I don't think they're going to write a child labor story either. True. Um, like, in True. first edition, we had there like there are whole cities based with their economy on slavery. That would be a place to put a, a Caden Kalianite like in the city of Okano, the city of slaves, and just have them go nuts. Uh, but I don't like like I said, they're not. They want to pivot away from the slavery action. So that's kind of Caden's only rule, like. It makes Caden less relevant by them doing that, which I'm all for them doing that, but like it does decrease the importance of Caden being there. Because they would be saying like, I want to, I'm the god that makes sure that fish stay wet, and it's like, okay, good for you, buddy. Um, if slavery is not really a thing here, then being abolishing of slavery, it, it's like, oh, well. Good job, gold star. Granted, I mean, oppression happens all play everywhere without just slavery, which is more his angle. But right. The god of anti-oppression doesn't really roll off the tongue as much as the god of freedom. <laughs> True. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. Anything else? This was fun. I think we covered it. All right, folks. Well, we'll see you next time. And Alex, we, 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 we'll be back for um, Norgerber, I think, is next. Sure. For I, with I, you, I am I, excited. I, I hope you guys invite me back for Norgerber. That would be a dream come true for me. <laughs> I, right, I folks, think we're going to try to do Saren Ray next, but we haven't gotten it locked in yet. Oh, that'll be. We'll exciting. try to. We're going to try to do Saren Ray um, because Rage of Elements is the next big book coming out, and what better god to do than the goddess of fire? Hell yeah! So, fire and healing. All right. See you guys. Until then, may your life be as yes. free as your taps. My beer is empty. This is bad to toast. Cheers. <laughs>